I don't really know why I should introduce this because it's like in the title of the video. But anyway, I got an ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, we're gonna take a look at it, see how it works inside, unbox it, I guess, to start. It's very light. I uh, bought a Chinese crappy low price. Well, actually, that's kind of fun to mention. This actually didn't come from China. It came from Germany. For some reason, uh, I bought it from, it said it came from Hong Kong, but uh, they apparently have this distribution site in Germany. It actually comes with an instruction manual. Let's see if it's Chinglish. Thanks for purchase ultrasonic clear. Excellent, it's Chinglish. So basically we don't need it. I don't know why people bother. Actually comes with a lead. Just for completeness sake, uh, I will look at this because I, I don't think I've done this on a video before. It says VDE. I'm sorry, this will, this will never come out on camera. It says uh, VDE is the European body of regulations for especially mains voltage rated stuff. So the fact that this is VDE rated is very good. H 05 VVF that's usually a material marker but these are like internal codes for the material so you don't really know and it's and it's fairly flexible but it's definitely PVC so they used a PVC with some plasticizer in it and stranded copper cable and that's fine the issue with plasticizer so one of the reasons why many cords you buy of course you get with electronics are very stiff not as flexible as this one uh, is plasticizers they leach out and they uh, make it so the plastic actually reacts with uh, sunlight and ozone a bit quicker uh, so the plastic actually becomes more brittle over time if you add a plasticizer compared to just leave it normal PVC and that means the cable won't last as long. So this is actually like, it feels like a very nice cable and it feels like it won't actually break because it's kind of flexible, but in the end, this will actually break earlier than other cables. So just so you know, hmm. All oh, right, I bought the one with heater. <laughs> I forgot this actually. It's got a 160 watt heater, I think. Actually, we did need the manual for one thing. This is kind of cool. Degas button, degas light will be on if press degas. That is, ultrasonic will work nine seconds, then pause six seconds until the default time is over. So that's cool. Um, degas, physically, how this works is if you have the, the idea of an ultrasonic cleaner, I probably should have explained this before. The idea of an ultrasonic cleaner is that you send very high frequency audio pulses, so just pressure waves through a liquid. Okay, so if you put pressure waves through liquid, pressure waves propagate as areas of high pressure and areas of low pressure subsequently. And if those pressure waves are strong enough, the area of low pressure is actually has such a low pressure that the liquid will locally become a gas. So if your vapor pressure is low enough, then liquids automatically become gas. But that's called boiling. And the boiling temperature, usually it's 100 degrees for water, but if the pressure is low enough, if you reduce the pressure uh, of your water, it will tend to become a gas. At pressure slightly higher than that, it will not automatically become a gas, but the vapor pressure will be so high that if there is something around, for instance, the surface of uh, a part you want to clean, then that surface acts as a nucleation site for a bubble. So it will actually become a gas locally because it's, it nucleates from, for instance, a, par a particle of dust or dirt. The idea of degassing kind of does the same thing. So you start the ultrasonic cycle. Uh, it starts putting pressure waves into the liquid and at locations where there is a tiny bubble of gas, that will act as a nucleation site for a little bubble. 
and the gas will travel inside the bubble or will actually fill that bubble because it, it actually nucleates from this uh, sulfate gas and it will bubble out. So it starts making bubbles and then waits some time for the bubbles to go out of solution, to go to the top of the solution, and then it starts over again. So that's kind of clever. Um, the cleaning action, the actual cleaning action, works by not just creating these gas bubbles, because just gas bubbles won't do anything. The idea is that because that low pressure wave is subsequently followed up by a high pressure wave, that bubble will collapse and that causes what is called uh, cavitation. So that vacuum, yeah, almost vacuum bubble will collapse and that will cause a pressure wave, a very localized tiny pressure wave, and that knocks off any dust or grease. Obviously, uh, some materials are too soft. So if you would put in like, I don't know, a piece of gum or something. Okay, gum is a bad example, but you know what I mean. If you put in some very soft material, uh, it will actually blast away quite large parts of your the thing you actually want to clean. And aluminum is kind of on the edge of what you can clean with an ultrasonic cleaner because it's just hard enough that you can possibly clean it. So for aluminum, ideally, you don't necessarily want to use 100% water-based cleaners. I am going to use just water to clean it, but there are like better chemicals to put in the water and to make sure that it, the ultrasonic action won't actually be abrasive. So, first of all, let's just take a quick look in here. Uh, we just see the ultrasonic transducer here. So ultrasonic transducers are essentially just a little piezoelectric materials sandwiched between a, like a horn-shaped thing that is very good at uh, distributing the waves into, it's like uh, the exact angle of diffraction of the ultrasonic waves and a contour weight on the other side. Then there is the front panel, which apparently is just the button. I think it's a scanning button thing because there are not enough, like you can see, there are only five, no, only four conductors on this thing. And there is also a temperature sensor. This is obviously a temperature sensor here. Uh, so this has to be scanning, otherwise you cannot actually do all the things that this is doing. There might actually be a processor on here because only four pins. I think I think there is something like a shift register or something on here because four pins to read all the buttons and also do the, oh, you know what, I'm stupid. The microprocessor is actually on here and it actually sends data through this four pin cable to the controller. Okay, so that's that demystified. Now we can take a look at uh, this PCB. So first of all, here is live neutral. And let's see, this is, well, this is kind of a dead giveaway. These are not uh, PPC wires. These are, I think polyethylene, yeah. It looks like polyethylene, maybe even silicone wires. So this goes to the heater. I am very slightly disappointed that they didn't uh, crimp heat shrink all around here because this is extremely close together, although these are probably tied together, so that's okay. But otherwise, like my first impression of this PCB is it's really good. It's surprisingly good. Components are all put on straight and there are nice crimps on here. Nothing seems to be badly soldered, although we have to look at the solder side, obviously. There's some gunk around here. The connectors, you cannot see them, but yeah, you can just about see, this is the power input connector. It's actually gunked down, so that won't vibrate loose. Very important in this kind of uh, context. It's pretty good, and uh, like here is the power input. Goes through a proper filter. There is a fuse. There is a separate fuse for the heater. 
also very useful to know that this is here. And if the heater doesn't work, but the rest of the unit works, it's probably this fuse. And the heater is obviously just turned on using this um, relay. This goes through a fusible resistor. No, this is the fuse, so this is not actually fusible. That's just an in inrush current resistor. It's a current limiting resistor. And then a MOV. Okay, so it goes through a C. This is just an X2 um, differential mode cap. Then a common mode choke. There is another. No, th these are both common mode capacitors. Then there's the choke. Then it goes into, well, this is obviously the bridge rectifier. All right, so this transformer feeds into the 7805, which is then smoothed. So we have some five volt supply here and I'm not quite sure why, because these are 12 volt relays. I would expect that to actually be for the 12 volt. Maybe this is just uh, the power supply for the other electronics. Maybe that's all, I don't know. They do need to get 12 volts from somewhere. So maybe there is an extra tap here. I don't know. That would mean maybe this is a rectification for that or something. We'll see when we uh, flip it over. Uh, and this is the ultrasonic supply. Not 100% sure what kind of topology it is, but this is usually a flyback type topology because these piezoelectric elements, they need kind of a high voltage and they're also fairly high power. Uh, another option is that this is actually a resonant converter, uh, which was explain why they need these big transformers for just 50 watts of output power. Well, I was uh, removing the screws from here. Forgot to mention, they actually have a positive current connection. That's really good. This is probably certifiable. That's very strange for cheap Chinese stuff. Uh, I would have genuinely expected the cheap option because this was only like a hundred bucks for an ultrasonic cleaner and a proper brand name ultrasonic cleaner is like a thousand. So I would have honestly expected something where I'd have to replace half the components or something, but this is really good. I'm very impressed. Yeah, looking at the circuit here. So this side is where the two transistors are. These are the three legs of each transistor. These are the transformers. And actually, if you look at it, one side of the transformer, like all these are bound together. And this goes directly to the other transformer. And then this is all bound together. These are obviously not transformers. These are inductors. And these are just two inductors in series to increase the inductance. So what you have here is, um, Essentially, these two transistors are making a PWM signal and that PWM is fed into a very large inductor, which kind of smooths out the rough edges of the, of the PWM and makes it into a sine wave, high frequency sine wave. And that is then fed into the actual transducer here. So that's directly connected into the transducer. And then there is uh, some capacitance and that's it. So it's a, actually a very easy uh, topology. It seems to be self-driving as well. Uh, I won't actually go into how it is self-driving. It's kind of weird, weird and wonderful, but they manage to um, drive this, this whole circuit with just analog components. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, that's, that's basically it. It's a, properly high quality uh, supply for this ultrasonic cleaner. I, I think this will last. The um, only thing that's really missing on here is conformal coating because I mean, it's an ultrasonic cleaner. Things are gonna get wet. Uh, there's plenty of ways for moisture to actually get in. So uh, I think I'm gonna spray this with my um, plastic spray and then use it. All right, so I'm sure you also want to see it in action. And there's a couple of interesting things. 
Uh, I turn it on, obviously you, see, you can see it's a scanning uh, display, but we've already established that that's not really an issue. Um, there's the heater, which you just push the button and it starts heating. And it's, uh, it's obviously a PTC heater. So it, you can see it uses about 100, it started at 120 something watts and it's already at 100 and it's going down pretty quick. So it's uh, not a <clears throat> heater you can set at a specific temperature. It's just uh, a uh, fixed temperature heater. The manual says it goes up to 65 degrees. So yeah, whatever. So aside from the heater, uh, we can turn on the actual ultrasonic uh, part. This may cause some interference in the sound, so I won't turn it off for long. And I put the multimeter here on kilohertz, so I'll do that again. And you can see it's not super stable, but it is producing sound waves at about 20 kilohertz. So I can just about hear it. Um, it's, it's very faint, but there's definitely this extremely high tone uh, coming off. It's just within hearing range, roughly. This means that this is actually a fairly large bubble uh, ultrasonic cleaner. The better ones uh, use 40 or 45 kilohertz, I think and you can clean more fine grains with that and get into smaller crevices and that kind of stuff. Lastly, there is the degas option. So let's just see that in action. Just automatically goes on and off. All right, we've seen enough of that. That's uh, that's it basically. So um, yeah, I'll be using this in future videos. I will be using this for anodization. anodization. Uh, it's it's going to be important to get the parts even cleaner than I did before. Uh, it's going to be fun. So hope you liked the video, and see you next time.